I recently made a video discussing the future of the metaverse, really comparing Decentraland versus Meta, which was previously known as Facebook. And the whole idea behind this video was kind of taking these blockchain native companies versus these kind of legacy centralized companies and comparing them, right? Obviously, companies like Facebook have a much higher market cap than something like Decentraland. But if you're looking, okay, what's the best investment over the next 10 years, and you see these trends happening, it's interesting to look at, okay, maybe you should still place your bets in a certain way, right? So with this video, I really want to focus on YouTube, which recently decided to, hey, we're going to remove dislike uh the dislike feature from youtube videos which i think is a, a bit of a weird option um they tweeted this out talking about uh which the, the presenter of this video did a really good job i personally think um but it, it's kind of ridiculous because in a lot of ways uh you, you see that the most dislike videos it's like it's hinting at something yes the, the point that they were trying to show in this video was essentially that you know there's there can be like crowds of people that kind of go and like gamify the dislike button but in my opinion uh, a good way that, that someone could just reverse engineer this is the top comment could be hey use this comment to like it as a dislike button. So like you can still see the feedback and, and feedback is a very, very important thing. It helps you learn. And that's why I, I personally like projects like Theta that are coming out and doing things. Um, Odyssey is doing incredible things, kind of taking the, the, the niche of YouTube uh, video streaming and putting it in a decentralized manner. So, you know, if you run a YouTube channel, essentially what you can do is you can hook up with Odyssey and completely for free, it'll take all your videos and put it in a decentralized manner. Or even if they take down your channel um, or choose to keep doing things like this that are maybe not beneficial to everyone because, you know, even with YouTube, right? So what's the most disliked video on YouTube? Well, it's their own video. It's, it's the YouTube rewind, which is kind of hilarious if you've never seen this, but it's a Will Smith. It's like where he goes like, it's this crazy time. If we look back a couple of years ago, simpler times in ways, but he's like uh, Fortnite and market, all these like weird things, but uh, 19 million dislikes. So now you can still see it on here, but essentially what they're going to do is um, you can still click the dislike button, but the, the public uh, view of the numbers won't be available. So it'll still be there in like users or creators can still see it in their back end, but it will not be publicly available. And again, I get this in a certain way, but the, the problem is here is this is kind of like the slippery slope, right? So as these things develop and as, you know, they go, hey, uh, this is how we're going to decide to do things. So maybe we don't like uh, people that are in the financial world speaking on a platform. Maybe you have to go somewhere else. Um, this is something where you, you have to diversify in a lot of different ways. And even, you know, if, if you're a viewer of, uh, of these different things or a user of different social media networks, start looking, okay, what are alternatives? What are different options? And yes, these, as I talked about in that metaverse video, they don't have the network effect that these, you know, legacy companies do. Legacy, it's, it's all a new space, right? The digital social media world is, is all very, very new. But at the end of the day, you have to look at, okay, if you're fully reliant on one platform and, and they're deciding to do things like this, and again, this is a, this is a small use case of it, um, who's to say they couldn't just ban you at any given time? They've, they've done this with a bunch of people. I know George Gammon, a guy that I really, really like. He runs the Rebel Capitalist channel. Um, he was randomly removed uh, for basically no reason. Yes, he talks about some controversial things, and he talks about politics, talks about economics. Overall, great channel. Highly recommend go check him out um, at Rebel Capitalist. But then you contrast that with something like Theta, which Theta Network is basically taking the whole idea of YouTube, adding more things on top of it, kind of um, not just taking YouTube, but also adding in kind of mechanisms from Twitch, mechanisms from all these other things, and bring it all into one hub. And Theta is kind of how you how you use this, right? So this is the actual uh, Theta token. So if we're looking at it right now, it's ranked number 31. Um, and this is kind of a whole network as well. So it's kind of like a, a platform where people can like host their own videos. And with this, you know, it's $7.33 right now, up, down about 10% on the daily. Mark cap is around $7.3 billion. Um, and this is, I find almost this more interesting than, than I do Facebook, right? Because when, when uh, or sorry, uh, YouTube rather, um, because here you can actually see that what they're building, um, all these things with T-Drop, the, the government system, um, how they're, they're hosting all these different things that they might get banned off other networks. Um, you know, Stephen Chen actually used to work for YouTube. So I, I, I do like this trend, right? And before we continue on, I do want to mention today's uh, sponsor for the video, uh, Apollo Fintech. They have something called gold secured currency. So in the world of all these meme coins, all these different crypto projects out there, it's important to actually look at something with, with a hard backing, which is gold in this case, and not just diversifying, you know, inside of a given market. I talk about this a lot on my channel. I don't just like to look at emerging market equities. I don't just like to look at, you know, um, only, you know, real estate equities. I like to look at all different asset classes and then diversify in, in between each of those. So that's always very, very important. And essentially what they do is they combine all the best aspects of crypto by providing an absolute backing to help stabilize price like a stable coin while facilitating growth. Um, they have a lot of different things here. So it's actually backed by gold in a land of um, mineral rights and assets. They're doing a lot of work in Africa, which I absolutely love. I've recently spent a month there. Um, combination so they actually combine the elements of a stable coin and an investment coin. Um, and they also have all these different things. You know, they're audited. It's actually redeemable. Um, and that's huge, right? So like I said, 
yes, a lot of people in the crypto space do not like gold, but I think as a hedge and at least saying like, hey, when everybody else is uh, fearful of something, be a bit greedy, right? So when everybody else is going like, oh, this is a terrible investment, you know, gold, even though it's been around for thousands and thousands of years, um, you know, I, I only am bullish on crypto, but hey, when that bear market comes, and it will, you know, at any point in time, uh, you're going to be wishing you had at least some sort of hedge, right? So it's important not only to get into inflation hedge assets, but then also looking at inside inflation hedge assets, how can you diversify in there? So that's really what I like about uh, gold secured currency, and they are the partner. So um, like I was saying, you can see the actual stats of this. Um, it's in very, very early stages, in my opinion. So you can actually see um, instead of, you know, for example, YouTube running all the servers where, you know, maybe over the next week, YouTube could be down. Um, with something like Theta, I think this is where some of these effects where uh, if, if Facebook went down for a longer period of time, if YouTube went down for a longer period of time, all these kind of main networks went down, um, a lot of these these kind of users would go over to something like Theta. And I think that's where you would see a bit more of a network effect and shift in users um, to something like Theta. Also, like I said, Odyssey is here. Um, I do like Odyssey because it's very, very easy, at least from a creator side, um, where I can basically just hook up my account and all the videos will be transferred over there pretty much immediately, right? So I'm doing this new series. Um, it's kind of being built for the next, like, I would say five, six years. Uh, that's kind of, I'm laying the, the foundations now. It's called called DeFi Decoded. And let's say, like, I don't know, something happens and YouTube says, we don't like people who talk about crypto, right? So this is where my DeFi Decoded series, even though I'm putting in work and recording all these things, doing it completely for free, something that other people would charge for. I'm basically doing tutorials on how to use each of these networks, laying it down from a basic level, so like how to set up uh, the wallets, how to get started in each of these networks, and then going from there. That's kind of the point of this series. Um, but, you know, if, if they took down my channel, it wouldn't be there, even though it's for free and it's it's not benefiting me in any way. It's only benefiting the, the viewers, the people that are curious on these things. So they actually do it right. They have their proper setup. Um, but if I can point them over to Odyssey, even though there's less viewers, less users there, um, you still it's still there, right? And, and some of these other people like Crypto Tips, tips I'm a big fan of. Uh, Lark Davis is pretty interesting. Um, you know, they, I think these are the biggest uh, amount of videos. They, they don't necessarily have a lot of views in the other categories, but... Again, it's, it's an interesting trend to pay attention to. There's also this interesting article on a tech crunch about this, you know, how YouTube, uh, you know, their move to, towards removing this dislike button is very, very controversial. But again, I get it. I get the kind of a the mental health thing. But at the end of the day, um, you know, as a user, like as a creator, if you want to turn these things off, you can. You can turn them off yourself. But to do this blanket statement of like everybody, you know, we're removing this feature, it's a little bit weird in my opinion. So, that's basically all. I'm curious what you guys think about this. Let me know in the comments what you think. Also, we have the Telegram group. Speaking of decentralization, uh, Telegram is a good option. Uh, so you can join in there. Um, and that's pretty much all for this video. If you enjoyed it, like the video, subscribe to the channel, stay up to date, hit the notification bell, and click all. Invest global. Until next time.